Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman Integration. Um, this is going to be a long one, and uh, what we're going to be doing today is evaluating an integral that you probably have all already heard of. That's the Gaussian integral. But we're going to be doing it uh, the Feynman way. We're going to be using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to get it. And this video is going to use a technique that's, that's different than the techniques that I've been using uh, before, where we create a function of t um, and then differentiate it um, and then reintegrate it and then plug in values um, to get a function of t where you can simply plug in a value and get your answer. Um, well, you, you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a function of t big F of t. That's to represent the fact that this function of t is the antiderivative of some original function. Um, so our big F of t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of this mess right here. That's e to the negative t squared times x squared plus 1, and then all of that over x squared plus 1 dx. And um, we're going to make some notes here that if you evaluate our big F of t at the point t equals infinity, you'll get 0 because we'll have negative infinity times whatever. It doesn't matter. That's going to be 0. Also, if you evaluate our big F of t at the point 0, you get pi over 2. Um, if you plug in 0 here, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, if you plug in 0 here, you get 1. 1 over x squared plus 1 integrated from 0 to infinity with respect to x is pi over 2. That's, uh, that, that's a well-known well integral right there. I think you learn it in Calc 1 or 2, um, whenever you learn trig sub. Um, so, okay, now we're going to do uh, the standard thing. We're, we're, we are going to differentiate this with respect to t using the Leibniz rule to arrive at little f of t. Um, little f of t because if you differentiate an antiderivative, you get back the original function. This is representing our original function. That's its antiderivative. So when we differentiate the antiderivative, um, we get the original function. The original function in this case is negative 2t times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared times x squared plus 1 dx. And I hope you can see where that comes from. Um, that's just differentiating this part right here with respect to t. Taking a partial derivative with respect to t will give you this. And of course I bring the negative 2t outside. Um, and now I'm going to kind of rewrite this to make it a little bit nicer for what we're going to do with it. We're going to write that as a negative 2 times e to the negative t squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared times t dx. And, uh, you know, pause, pause the video if you want to verify that. Um, basically, I'm just I'm splitting this up into e to the negative tx squared times e to the negative t squared, bringing the e to the negative t squared outside the integral because um, well, it's a constant with respect to x. And uh, then I'm bringing the t inside because it's going to help us with our u substitution. Um, our u substitution is right here. So we're going to take this and then make a substitution where u is equal to tx. That will give us that du is equal to negative... <clears throat> I'm sorry, there should not be a negative sign there. My mistake... So u is equal to 2, uh, I'm sorry, t, du is equal to t dx. Using that substitution, we get the following. That f of t is equal to negative 2t times e to the negative t squared times 
the integral from zero to infinity. Again, it's still the integral from zero to infinity because making this substitution will not change our bounds of integration. If you plug in zero for x, you get zero for u. And if you plug in infinity for x, you get infinity for u. So we still have zero to infinity. Anyway, I'll say that again. Our function of t is equal to negative 2t times the integral uh, negative 2t times e to the negative t squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared d. And I'm going to wait for that phone to stop ringing. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll edit it out. Maybe I won't. Um, anyway. Notice that this part right here, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared du, is i. I know that here we have u and there we have x, but I mean, you all know that that doesn't matter. Um, so we have f of t being equal to negative 2i times e to the negative t squared. So that's our function of t right here. Now, the next step is what makes this problem different from the rest. And this step's, this step's really neat. Uh, whoever, whoever thought of this first was really, really clever. And actually, I got this integral from a uh, paper on differentiation under the integral sign published by Keith Conrad of the University of Connecticut, I believe. Um, but anyway, so our next, in our next step, what we're going to do is we are going to integrate f of t from zero to infinity with respect to t. And that would also mean we would have to integrate this thing from zero to infinity with respect to t. And that's gonna be shown in this step right here. So, actually it's this step right here. So we have that the integral from zero to infinity of f of t from integrating that 0 to infinity with respect to t is equal to, now I'm going to be uh, just copying down or using the fundamental theorem of calculus. I don't know if it's part one or part two, and I'm not even going to Google it. But it's one of them. You all know what it is. It states that the integral from a to b of some function of x, usually, dx is equal to big F of a minus, or I'm sorry, big F of B minus big F of A. And that's what we're doing right there. We're just, we're just writing down what it's going to be in its most general terms. So the integral from 0 to infinity of F of T dt is equal to big F evaluated at infinity minus big F evaluated at 0. But luckily, we already know what that is. We already know that big F evaluated at infinity is equal to zero. And we already know that big F evaluated at zero is equal to pi over two. So the integral from zero to infinity of our F of t dt is equal to negative pi over two, which is equal to this thing right here. It's equal to the integral from zero to infinity of this thing right here. And you can see that I just brought out the negative 2i outside of the integral in that step right there because uh, it doesn't depend on t. Uh, it, it's, we're integrating with respect to t, so i is a constant. And in fact, it doesn't matter what we're integrating with respect to. i is a constant. It's stated right here. This, this thing is going to be a constant. So what we get is negative 2i times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared dt, which is also equal to i. So this whole thing right here is equal to negative 2i squared. I, I hope you guys are following this. I hope I'm, I'm explaining this well enough, because I know I had a lot of trouble. Um, Keith's paper didn't hold your hand. Um, so I, I really had to sit and stare at it for a while to understand what he was talking about. Hopefully, um, hopefully you're getting this the first time through. If not, you know, pause it, rewind it, watch it again. I, it will click, I promise. So anyway, 
we have the, the two parts of this of this step right here now that we're interested in are this part and this part. These are all equivalent. That's equal to that is equal to that is equal to that. So this is equal to that, and that's the part that we're interested in, stated right here. That negative pi over two is equal to negative two times i squared. And from there, it's pretty simple. You solve for i, gives you, uh, that i is equal to the square root of pi over two. A lot of people like to write that as the square root of pi over four. It doesn't matter. Um, you've probably seen it both ways. But anyway, that's uh, the Gaussian integral evaluated using the Leibniz rule. Uh, hope you enjoyed that.